So uh, I am Kevin McCoy, uh, as it says right here, I'm an artist in New York City. Um, so uh, digital, I should probably add digital artist in New York City. Um, yeah, I wanna thank Stephanie, I wanna thank Kelsa for, and everybody at New Inc for inviting me back uh, to, to talk about these things. Um, I'm gonna do basically essentially a kind of NFT past and future uh, speed run. And I think that you'll be kind of surprised to hear the role that new, the new museum and new ink plays um, in that, um, in that history. Um, and it's, it, it, it's kind of cool. So um, my, my presentation is more kind of tabs than, than decks. So I'm going to go, uh, go this way. Um, so uh, I'm a digital artist. It kind of feel, you know, felt that pain that my friends and I feel about not really um, kind of being able to participate in markets in that kind of traditional way. Um, and so um, 2012, uh, fell in love with Bitcoin. And in 2013, I'm on the Bitcoin talk forums posing questions like this. Um, how can blockchain be used as a method for assigning ownership of digital artworks? Um, you know, it seemed like an obvious uh, kind of question to me um, back then. Um, I'm kind of speculating about how it might work. Um, message embedding is this kind of, kind of concept I was sort of coming up with, or would it be more like uh, custom wallets or would it be uh, specialized uh, uh, contract like transactions? You know, how could this, um, you know, how could this work? Uh, it was pretty undefined territory at the time. Um, fast forward a couple of months, um, May of 2014, um, myself and Anil Dash are at the 7 on 7 conference hosted at the New Museum uh, by, uh, by Rhizome. Uh, new, and, uh, 7 on 7 is kind of the kind of uh, older sibling to, uh, to, uh, to, to Demo Day in a lot of, in a lot of ways. Um, I won't, I won't uh, play this now, but we're essentially, well, we're, we're, here we are on stage in this keyframe. You can kind of see it. We're we're uh, presenting this idea of, of 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 the NFT, or what later became became uh, called the NFT. We had uh, showing specifically how a blockchain could be used to um, model and represent um, uh, provenance and ownership and rights um, around digital media. Uh, we launched a tool uh, that was publicly available at that time, a very kind of simple tool. Uh, and in the course of this, I um, produced a number of, 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 of media works, um, animations on chain. Those turned out to be the first um, NFTs ever, uh, ever created. Um, New Ink starts, um, I'm invited into, uh, to, you know, Karen and, and, and Lisa um, invite me to hash out these ideas at New Ink. Seems like a perfect place for, um, you know, for those experiments to play out. Um, and, and it was, so kind of dive in, I find a technical co-founder. Um, we start work trying to kind of build this, this platform and try to kind of invent this airplane as we're sort of you know, jumping off the cliff. Um, I found the first uh, presentation from, uh, Jan from the original demo day, January, 2015. We don't even have a product yet. Uh, we don't have a site. Uh, it, we hardly have anything, and here I am, like trying to figure out how to explain to people, you know, what blockchain ownership looks like, and using these kind of things. Well, it's kind of like how the signature, the autograph, used to do it, but now it's this kind of code, and that code sits in this ledger, and that code makes it yours. Get it? Uh, no, no one really got it. Uh, and so, but what can you do with it? And so, there's this kind of list of verbs: claim, collect, own, show, transfer, buy. And the list we came up with is still pretty much what people do um, do with NFTs today. Um, buy and sell. Um, so you know the the the, the space was kind of conceptually defined, um, kind of right um, right at the beginning. Um, and so at the time, you know, there's the, this idea of of um, you know was pro of provenance. You know, you know was a big uh, uh, you know it was, it was kind of a big part of it. Trying to show that, trying to um, explain what that is. The idea of additions, not just a, an infinite copy and paste, but there could be kind of constraints and limits on that. Um, through this technology. Um, there could be uh, the concept of licenses that could go along with it. It's kind of like copyright or kind of like creative commons, but creative commons is by and large non-commercial. Um, our thing is about commercial, it's about monetization. So how does it work? Through smart contracts. And so, um, you know, we're, we're and I'll, I'll, I'll jump out of that now, but that's, you know, kind of that's the, the, uh, uh, the kind of way we were trying to explain this at the time. It took us another like six months before we launched and had a fully um, functional uh, marketplace with, um, you know, with blockchain-based registration, buying and selling, um, a, a mobile app, all this kind of amazing stuff. It was pretty incredible. The big problem was there was zero buyers. Nobody was interested in using this, uh, using this technology. Um, it just completely uh, was just, you know, trying to you know, smash through a stone wall. It was kind of incredible. So nowadays, of course, that's past. Uh, we go into and here down here, right? Kind of maybe, maybe and is sort of the present, you know, kind of what, what happened in the meantime? Why did it, um, how did it come back? What, what did happen? 
um, and and the, the big thing was this was uh, was was uh, was smart contracts. The kind of the power and the notion of smart contracts really took off, and that first uh, you know hit in this uh, in this world called uh, called DeFi, called distributed um, or decentralized finance. Um, this is not DeFi. This is a web page that looks at DeFi products. But what DeFi does is use um, uh, smart contract technology on blockchains to recreate in a decentralized and permissionless way a whole bunch of different aspects of the financial world, um, exchanges, lending, uh, derivative products, payments, assets, things like that, that all work through on, on Ethereum through these interlocked and interconnected and, and interoperable uh, smart contracts. And that was a really powerful idea um, that was certainly not existing uh, at the time we were doing, doing our efforts. And that's the base from which uh, the kind of current generation and the kind of current rebirth of NFTs um, have, 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 have come from, built on this kind of smart, um, this kind of smart contract base. So the future. What's gonna What's gonna come next? You know, where are we at? We are, you know, everyone's familiar with the kind of like, you know, kind of crazy chaos now and, and and frenzy around kind of buying and selling. But what What's gonna come next? What's gonna What's gonna kind of happen? I've got a couple of ideas. Um, uh, that could be wrong, but we'll see. Uh, the first thing is this idea of, of of generative work, and so I think that there's going to be a kind of use of of on chain contracts in a generative way to produce work that couldn't be done any other way. And so, and there's a couple of little examples of that that are already starting to happen. Um, the first one was this work um, that was just recently auctioned at the Phillips Auction House by um, Mad Dog Jones called Replicator. And this is a series, um, it's just a, the, the, the visual artwork is just the kind of MP4, kind of whatever, but the, um, the, the on-chain stuff is this interacting um, you know, set of contracts that can produce new tokens and has this whole like, kind of interoperability of tokens um, on-chain that I think is really pretty cool. Um, another uh, project that's happening is this one called Euler Beats that is generative in terms of its um, in, its kind of use of tokens and the and, and this kind of generation and printing and burning of tokens uh, to produce these um, audio visual abstractions. Um, and uh, so I think these are just kind of some quick examples that that show this kind of generative possibilities. I'm going to be launching a generative project this summer. Hopefully, it'll be it'll be cool. Um, the next thing is happening is uh, big is community. And I think that tokens are going to drive. Um, community in some pretty interesting ways. Um, I did a project a couple of years ago uh, at the Whitney Museum that that tried to you know kind of touch on this in some different ways. This project called Pu Public Key Private Key. Um, how this one worked is that uh, my wife and I uh, donated an artwork to the um, to the museum to their collection. It was a 16 millimeter film. We wanted a piece of media, but we wanted a physical piece of media and one that only existed in a certain time and place. We give it to them. Uh, it's not we don't have it anymore. We donated it. But then we created a series of tokens, 50 tokens that let people um, that people could buy and sell or trade or give away or whatever that represented being listed as one of the donors of record for that artwork after the fact, creating kind of a secondary market for um, this kind of donor credit. Um, and that went on for six months. Uh, and there was and, and at the end of that six month period, the museum said, OK, fine enough. And these are the names of people that kind of like some sort of musical chairs that were kind of left um, hold, you know, with the, with the tokens. And then these go into the, the, um, the, 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 you know, kind of permanent record of the museum. And so this is a community, right? This is a kind of token defined community around um, collecting and donating um, with respects to the museum. Um, it was a kind of simple exercise, but it worked out really well, but there's already some, a lot more cool things um, happening. Um, one of which is this, is this project called Friends with Benefits, uh, which they call in a tokenized community. Um, it's a, a, a Discord server. So it's mostly kind of a chat based environment of, of, of people kind of uh, talking about different things, but they've made their own token um, called FWB and you need to possess FWB to um, be allowed into it. So it's a kind of uh, gated community in a way. Um, they are using that, um, you know, part of the way that that's working is being distributed. Uh, like this link over here, Uniswap, this, you know, this is part of that kind of DeFi stuff that was going on in the background. They're building their thing on top of that prior uh, technology. Um, and so I think that this, um, that this, that this is going to be a big uh, deal. Um, the next thing that are things like that are going to kind of start showing up more and more. Um, the next thing on this community front that's going on that's really pretty wild is this, uh, these things called DAOs uh, or distributed autonomous organizations. And you could think of these as kind of like little mini token defined uh, corporations, people that are coming together with sort of rights and privileges and responsibilities that are defined through these tokens um, and that, that can do different kinds of things. So this one, Flamingo DAO, is a big player in the NFT world, um, kind of collecting and curating and, and you, know, you know, doing all these kind of things with NFTs that's pretty interesting. 
um, you, you can read all about them uh, here. I, I will, uh, I will um, you know, leave that up to you. Um, and then the last thing that I think is going to become a big deal uh, with NFTs uh, is this down here is rights. And this has been kind of the, 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 the missing child, you know, the step, you know, the kind of stepchild and all of this. The, the interoperability and all the kind of craziness that, um, that DeFi uh, happened went th happened because rights in that traditional sense weren't really um, thought about. And so this is an issue that's come up more and more with, um, with NFTs around what are you actually owning? Uh, you know, do, you, do you actually have rights to this? So I think that as more and more assets come online, this is gonna be a bigger and bigger deal. Um, Monograph, the company that, uh, that I started, um, has uh, is, 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 is um, kind of re returning um, around this idea of rights. We wrote a patent back in the New Ink days, a pretty fundamental patent around rights um, that we think is going to play a role in, um, uh, in, in in these ideas going forward. So, you know, who knows what's going to happen? This space moves kind of at this sort of insane rate. Um, none of this could be right. It could all be wrong. But what is really incredible to me is to see this idea that started off as literally, literally like sitting right here in the studio, thinking about those ideas of like blockchain and ownership back in 2013, now be this kind of worldwide phenomenon that everyone is talking about. So, don't give up on your dreams. Just keep on hustling, keep on pushing because you don't know uh, where it's going to happen. Um, I'm going to. I'm happy to talk about this more in the breakout room. Um, we are not raising money, so save your money for the awesome presenters that are here uh, today. But I'm happy to talk more about this in the breakout room. Thanks, everybody.